What's good, my statisticians? This is Professor Sampson from PSI Love Math, back with another statistical banger. So I am excited. We're in another series. This series is for hypothesis testing. So we will have about six or so videos about hypothesis testing. Let's get ready to get right into this. The video is going to be about hypothesis testing for population means when your sigma is known. And remember, when your sigma is is known what kind of test are you doing you are doing what's known as a z test let's get into this please don't forget to subscribe 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 to my channel and let's get it going so i've taken the liberty of writing down the steps for hypothesis testing now if you remember in the last video thing and i gave you only four steps that you're going to that you would do. And what I did here was split those steps up into something that makes sense that we can go through that I like for my classes. I don't think any of your instructors will have a problem with these steps, but for my classes, these are definitely the steps. The first step is going to be write your claim in words, state your null, a null and alternate hypothesis like before, determine your test statistics, state the level of significance, calculate your test statistics, draw a picture, draw a picture. A picture's worth a thousand words and we'll talk about what drawing a picture really means and decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, then you're going to interpret your final answer. And remember, interpreting your final answer. Now with hypothesis testing, there are two methods for hypothesis testing. One method is called the critical value method and the other method is called the p-value method. So two methods on the critical value method, which I call CV, or the p-value method. Now I will demonstrate both methods for any examples that I do so that you can know how to do both methods. Some instructors may want you to pick one of the methods and other times they'll tell you what method. So you need to be familiar with both methods. Let's get started with an example so we can go through these because they tend to be pretty long. So the first example here is a wedding website states that the average cost of a wedding in 2017 was $25,764. One conserved bride hopes that the average is less than reported. To see if her hope is correct, she surveys 55 recently married couples and finds that the average cost of a wedding in the sample was $23,015. Assuming that the population standard deviation is $7,235, is there sufficient evidence to support the bride's hope at a 0 0.10 level of significance? The first thing I want you to do is write your claim in the words. You're going to write the word claim. Whether this is for points or not, this will help you interpret in your final thing. So what is her claim? What is she trying to work with, right? What is she trying to see? That's her hope. One rise concern hopes that the average is less than that. So she claims that the average cost of a wedding in 2017 is less than 25764 That's her claim. That's what she's trying to see. That's her hope. So that the average cost of a wedding in 2017 is less than 25 $5,764. So that's your claim written in word. Then we're going to, and I'm going to number these, but you don't really have to number these once you get used to it. State my null and alternate hypothesis. Remember, your alternate hypothesis is actually the claim. So average, what letter are we going to use for that? Average is going to be mu is less than 25764. As I said in the last video, that your null is always what? Equal to. Mu is equal to 25764. Five, seven, six, four. These numbers are never different from each other. Now it says we need to determine the test statistic. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to list all our known in order to determine the test statistic. Uh, we already listed one. So we have mu is equal to had 55 married couples. So that's n equals 55. The average cost of that sample that she got sample average x bar is equal to 23015. The population standard deviation is is as sigma and our level of significance which is alpha is equal to 0 0.10 so under this listing we need to determine our test statistic our test statistic is using the information that we have what test statistic are we going to use now we should know what that since we know the population standard deviation we're going to do a z test z test statistic and i'm going to call it z test because this is a test statistic and remember this is x bar minus 
minus mu all over sigma divided by the square root of n. You're going to plug in these numbers, 23015 minus mu 25764. To get this test statistic, you're going to find it in your calculator. You've done the work to get the points for showing your work. Now all you need to do is find this part in your calculator. So when we pull up our calculator, we're going to go where we've been going for a while. We're going to go over to stat, then we're going to go over to test. We know this is a Z test. This is not a Z interval from the last chapters. This is a Z test. We're not looking for an interval. We're looking for a test statistic. So again, as usual, do we have data or do we have statistics? We have statistics. We don't have data. And then we're going to put in our number. Now at this point, we have to decide we have to put in what our alternative hypothesis was, all right? Was it mu e not equal to that? Was it mu is less than or mu is greater than? In this case, she was trying to say mu is less than. We get that from our information here. Just so you can recall, here it is right here. Mu is less than. So that's what we have to tell the calculator. Less than, and then we go down to calculate. And then it gives you your Z score, which you need to round appropriately. Z is equal to negative 2.82. Remember, Z is still the same number of decimal places, 2.82, which makes sense because less than means below the mean. So it's going to be negative. That's what less than means below the mean. The next thing is that is our test statistic. We've calculated our test statistic. We're going to draw a picture and decide whether we're going to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis. So what do I mean by draw a picture? So this is where I'm going to split up the method. I'm going to use the critical value method. Let's draw the picture using this critical value method. The critical value method uses the critical value. And you should have read that the critical value are values you get off the chart. Now listen, you need to write this down. Critical values come from a chart, Z, T, chi squared chart. Test statistics come from a formula, one of the four formulas that I showed you in the last video. Critical values come from a chart, C, C. Critical values from a chart. Test statistics come from a formula. So we have gotten a test statistic. Now we're going to get a critical value. To find a critical value, we're going to use alpha, which was equal to 0 0.10. We're going to look on our Z chart and I'm going to have you do this on your own. I'm not even going to pull up the Z chart because you should already be familiar with reading the Z chart. So let's get that up. So if your critical value is 0 0.10, if your alpha is 0 0.10, your critical value is the Z from the chart. And we're going to call that Z. Sometimes I put crit or CV, Z crit or C, Z, C, V, either one. So 0 0.01. So point, sorry, point 0.10. So if you look up point 0.10 on your Z chart, you should get negative 1.2. Eight. Negative 1.28. It should definitely be negative because you're on the lower side. 0 0.10. Negative 1.28. Hopefully you get that. So the critical value, let's say if this is the mean, this is your critical value of negative 1.28. This area right here, this dark area is called the critical region. This is what we would call our extreme side our abnormal side. That's what the critical region is. The abnormal side to the left, right? To the left, less than to the left. Anything to the left of negative 128 is in our critical region, which we also call the rejection region. Anything on this side, which is not darker to clear, is failed to reject. So that's in the fail to reject region. So that's the critical value method in a nutshell. We've written our critical value on our picture. That's why you drew the picture. Now we have to find our test statistic and decide if our test statistic, remember our test statistic is our data. Is our data falling into the, the fail to reject region, which is not enough information, or is it falling into that abnormal region of where, where it's not possible that this stuff happened without some kind of help. So look on the number line, negative 2.82, right, is our test statistic. So where does it fall? Negative 2.82 is going to fall over here. It doesn't matter where it's in this critical region, whether it's here or not, it's in our critical region. Since the test statistic falls in the critical region, we are going to reject that hoe, reject her, reject the HO. Reject the null 
all hypotheses in favor of the alternate. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. So now I can interpret. Interpretation again is crucial, but I gave you a shortcut in interpretation in the last video. So when you reject the null hypothesis, you are saying there is sufficient evidence to support your claim, the claim that. This is why writing the claim out in Word comes into handy because all you need to do is write the stuff after claim. The claim that the average cost of a wedding and no dot, 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 you must write it out in 2017 is less than 25,764. That is a full hypothesis test using the critical value method. Now remember I said there are two methods. The other method, which I'm going to put right here, because the other method doesn't change your answer. It's just a different way to do it. And you must know both methods. It's called the p-value method. The p-value method, unlike the critical value method, we are comparing the p-value versus alpha. P-value versus alpha. So then we have to figure out what in the world is a p-value. A p-value is a probability value. It's the probability of getting a sample statistic as extreme or more extreme, right, than the one observed in the data when the null hypothesis is assumed to be true. What the hell did she just say? What the hell are you talking about? The p-value is a probability of getting something so extreme. It's a probability value of getting something so extreme when the null hypothesis is true. So if the null hypothesis is true, what's my probability of getting this answer? If that probability is really, really low, then it doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because if I assume that something is true, but my probability is low, then that means that my my assumption is messed up. For example, if the probability of me getting some Chick-fil-A right now is 0.0005, and I thought that it was true, when I found out that the probability is 0.0005, pretty much that's obviously not true because the probability is so low. That probability is so extreme when you assume that your null hypothesis is true that you have to reject the null hypothesis. Get it, girl. Here she go about to preach. Oh, hell no. So you have to reject that null hypothesis if that probability value is so low if that null hypothesis was true. So I'm saying if this is true, the probability of getting this is really, really low if this is true. So it can't be true. Preach it. So that's what a p-value is. The probability of getting a sample statistic, they call it as extreme or more extreme, just extreme, than one observed when the null hypothesis is assumed to be true. So I assume this to be true. If I assume this to be true, this is the probability I get if this is true. If that probability is so, so low, based on that being true, then that thing can't be true. It cannot be true that I'm getting Chick-fil-A tonight. So how do we get the p-value? So for a z-test, the p-value is the probability value is the area under the curve. Say it again, girl. <laughs> Let me tell you again, the p-value is the area under the curve on your z-chart. Your z-chart that you've been using all semester, the p-value in a z-test, we're talking about z-test, the p-value in a z-test is the area under the curve, which we already know how to find. Well, we take our test statistic, negative 2.82, and we turn, we look that up on our chart. Can you get it in your calculator? Yes, but I'm not accepting it. So you look up negative 2.82 two on the chart and you will find the area under the curve. The p-value is 0.0024. And in this case, alpha was 0 0.10. And then you can add two zeros if you know math. If you have the same number of decimal places, it's easier to compare. So my probability, if this mu is true, if this cost is 25.764, the probability of getting that is 0.0024. It's not probable if that's true. That's way too low of a probability. So if you compare these numbers, this is 24 and this is 1,000. Obviously, 24 is less than 1,000. If your p-value is less than alpha, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Patrick, say that again. That again. No, the other thing. If your p-value is less than alpha, you're going to reject your null hypothesis. So how are you going to remember this? I'm going to pull in Snoop. Snoop's going to tell you something. Snoop's going to tell you if the p is low, then the whole bus goes. If the 
He is Lord, I all gotta go. Now you can interpret that however you want to interpret it, but long as you remember it. If the P is low, then the whole must go. So this probability value is lower than our alpha, so we must get rid of that hoe. You got to reject that hoe. Just reject. As we see here, we rejected the null hypothesis. With the p-value and a critical value method, we're going to get the same answer. And you're still going to say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average cost of a wedding in 2017 is less than $25,764. That is a full hypothesis test and what you have to do on every hypothesis test. Depending on which method you use, you can use either method, critical value method or p-value method, depending on the question if it's asking you to use a particular method or not. But just so you know, either method is going to give you the same answer. That is our first hypothesis test. There will be more opportunities and more problems as we go through this series. Check out the next video, which is going to still be more hypothesis test. Again, I'm out of here. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. This is Professor Benson from PSI Love Math.